Today on Glove Affairs, let's talk about the fight between Vernon Forrest and Shane Mosley. Vernon Forrest and Shane Mosley. This was a classic back in the day. Hey, shouts to my man Ego. Ego Frost fastened for this. I know you requested this joint about three weeks ago, but I just said it. Y'all keep sending the uh, suggestions and requests, and I'll keep knocking them out as I read them and stuff, or at least in some type of chronological. That being said, this was an amazing fight and like a, a crash course fight for both fighters. They were both unbeaten at the time. Vernon Forrest coming in 33 and 0, I believe, with like 26 uh, knockouts. Mosey was 38 and then, uh oh, I believe with like 33 knockouts at the time. Both of them had one common opponent. They had both knocked out Adrian Stone, who wasn't a bad contender himself around the time. Mosey was a little more established from a pro standpoint of opposition, who we had faced thus far going into that fight. He had beaten John John Molina. He had beat John Brown. He had took out, uh, 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 he, uh, it was some, he beat John Molina. He beat John Brown. Somebody else I'm forgetting on that tech. Tim, Long story short, going then into the fight and everything, Forrest had still had his bones. Forrest was a little bit more pronounced because of the fact that the two had fought in the amateurs and he had actually beat Mosley in the amateurs. In fact, Jack Mosley, and I heard that a lot of Mosley's handers told him not to take that fight and advised him against it. But Mosley being the true champion he was, wanted to prove his point and he went in there and did his thing. Philip Holiday, that was the other fighter I was thinking about that Mosley fought and everything on and up into the time was 31 and 0, was unbeaten at the time and a very classy fighter himself. At the end of the day, that was also the fight that came, that came with a little controversy with Mosley. This is first when we heard the stories about him and the uh, steroids and the performance enhancers and stuff and him admitting that he had unknowingly ingested something and then later on coming out to admit that he had knowingly taken it with the Balco scandal. Having said that, going into this bout, I thought that it was like a crazy like affair, but I felt like Forrest was able to like assert himself physically in ways. I love Forrest. He was a viper. Rest in peace. He was a beast like with his range, but more so he knew how to like get inside. He knew how to impose his strength, but he knew how to do it responsibly, even with his height and, and even with his height and reach. And like, you know, he was able to dig the molds of his body. He always reminded me in some sense, like a right handed version of Johnny Bumpus. I don't know if y'all, how I many of y'all remember the sensation Johnny Bumpus back at uh, Welterweight, but Forrest always kind of reminded me of him in a sense, except like from a right handed stance. Thing is, Mosley got in there and was mixing with him. I thought that the second round was very pivotal. I honestly gave Mosley the first round. I thought that headbutt clash that happened in the second was a little bit of a change in the fight. I didn't think Mosley particularly dealt with it well and trying to recover from it. And then some of the shots he was getting taken when he tried to stand his ground kind of made him a little more timid. Forrest was the only fighter, and in Mosley's credit, because of this fight and this being his like first major step up in opposition, Seeing him get rocked and seeing him hurt and seeing him like wobbled and retreat like that on several times, a lot of people started to question his chin, started to question what it was going to be. And lo and behold, it's living proof that like you can't just judge a fighter's fight from one fight, especially in their, own, their early going in his progressions. Because I would say Mosley had one of the greatest chins in boxing history. Since Mosley done been in there with Cotto, who done been in there with Canelo, Floyd, Pacquiao, I mean, Margarito, you name it. De La Hoya with two fights and everything. You know what I mean? He didn't end up getting stopped until like I think it was late in his career over back injury against Anthony Mundine and stuff. And this was like a way over the hill mostly about like 42 years old up at junior middleweight. Anyway, moving back into this bout. Mosey would sit there and he would come back and he would like time little shots from time to time be able to catch Forrest with overhand rights but see that was always Mosey's big strength was landing right hands and left hooks but in this situation he had to try to like throw overhand rights against a taller opponent. And that can be poison <laughs> because a taller opponent automatically is going to have the advantage of the open hand rights, especially against a fighter like Mosley kept his arm so low, or kept that league glove so low himself, even traditionally and stuff. So I thought that like, you know, Forrest just like took it to him in many spots and he was able to like his, you know, every time that Mosley started to make a rally and was able to make an adjustment and jump in with a couple of left hooks and everything and catch Forrest in between the line. I thought Forrest was always able to like regain control and everything and reassert himself like later. And, you know, at the end of the day, Forrest was like, you know, he was a very tough fighter to deal with in the trenches. He was a very tough fighter because, you know, his style was kind of bent. He had such a deep amateur background. He had so many physical gifts. Like, in fact, most fighters that actually, all three opponents that actually beat Forrest were somebody that wasn't like more conventional or somebody that you would think of from a classical boxing standpoint. You think about Ricardo Mayorga taking him out twice and stuff and lowering him into the slugfest ill-advised. And you think about the first Sergio Mora fight, which he avenged later on. But like I thought that like Forrest really made a stamp and made himself with that name. And he gave Mosley a rematch and was able to beat him again and showed that he was a legitimate champ. Mosley showed at the same time that like, you know, the amount of punishment he was willing to endure and take 
and the fact that he was still fighting hard all the way and the fact that he still had a lot of moments and rallied i don't think a lot of fighters would have came back from the hell that mosley took in that fight i really don't so it's like i thought that like on both sides there were ebbs, there were ebbs and flows in between there were ebbs and flows in the middle rounds mosley would have certain points where he would start to serve himself and make a little bit of a swing you would see his like father trying to tell him to step in and throw the one two one and everything and try to keep him on the end of it i thought one big thing that helped mosley in that fight as well was that he never really was a particularly jab oriented fighter mosley more stepped like a flicking jab a measuring jab right and he would sit there and like kind of touch gloves and everything and just kind of like crouch his way under and change his levels it'd keep a fighter off at distance but it's hard to keep somebody back and a lot of like fighters when they fight like a longer run fight a lot of fighters make that mistake and i think it's a cardinal mistake of abandoning their jab they start to figure their jab isn't going to get in anyway because he's got the reach but the thing is the jab has multiple like it, it has multiple purposes not just like the reach itself and everything and not like just being able to land it but also being able to like occupy that opponent's guard also being able to make him respect it when you shoot i didn't think mosey did that enough i felt like i mean he loaded up a lot like he was landing a lot of good shots but he was loading up a lot on those um overhand rights and like and getting hit with way bigger overhand rights in return and Forrest was changing head slots on him and getting inside that overhand right and really doing some damage so i thought that it was like a phenomenal fight and it was definitely a classic, very re rematch worthy. I was glad that the rematch happened. Shouts to Mark, to Forrest, shouts to Mosley, shouts to my man Ego. Hey, hit me up and everything. It's been a while. Halloween, you holler.